Shall we look to God in prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Matthew chapter 18, verse 14 says, It is not my heavenly Father's will that even one should perish. This verse talks about the importance of individual souls. Mainly, what our Lord Jesus Christ had with regard to the individuals, is concerned for the individuals. That's what we are going to see in our meditation this evening. See, no one was perhaps busier than Lord Jesus Christ in his times when he went about doing his ministry. His ministry's schedule, as we all know, was so tight that the time of his work on earth was as short as three and a half years, as we all know. However, his fame spread fast and multitudes were after him to hear him. He preached in mountains, as we all know. Whenever he preached in mountains, we know people gathered in large numbers to listen to him. He preached in seashores and so on, so on, so forth. Wherever he went, there was a large crowd going after him. But in spite of this picture that we see, his love for individuals remained the same. He never failed to realize the worth of individual man or individual woman. That's what we are going to see. Take, for example, John's Gospel. Gospel of St. John speaks about our Lord's contact with individuals. For example, first chapter, we see Jesus Christ and his personal contacts with Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel. He even makes specific promises to Nathaniel. That's what we see from verses 1 to 51. If you see from uh, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, if you see the whole chapter, he will be talking to the individuals. Then chapter 2. He spends time with servants in the wedding at Cana. That's what we see in chapter 2. Then chapter 3, though it is night time, he has come back from his strenuous work outside, reaching out people in large numbers. We see him in long and patient conversation with Nicodemus. That's what we see in Chapter 3. Then chapter 4. Though he was tired after a long journey, yet we see him winning the soul of Samaritan woman. And we all know the story of the entire, how the entire village was changed and brought in to the Lord. So reaching out to the non-Jews was seen in that chapter. In chapter 5, we see the Lord ministering to a helpless paralytic. Likewise, we can go on reading about the contacts that our Lord Jesus Christ had with the individuals. The book of John very rarely shows him spending time with large crowds. His earthly ministry was very unique. He was winning a person 
even when he was hanging on the cross, we know the thief on the cross, how he gave, he showed him the paradise. So to emphasize the importance of each individual, our Lord gave three parables, one after the other in Luke chapter 15, which was read to us as our portion for this evening. First, the last sheep. Though 99 is intact, the shepherd goes after the last one and rejoices with others after finding the lost sheep. The lost coin, woman had lost one out of 10 coins, still she traced it and rejoices over it. Lost son, what a joy when the boy comes back, even after the uh, elder brothers protest, in the, to, the celebration goes on after the, um, the other brother returns. So the preciousness of individual is very much shown in the parables that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. So the parables are directed to the Pharisees and scribes. The lost sheep, lost coin, and prodigal son all correspond to lost sinners being found by Jesus that is entering the kingdom of God. Now, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the point now is, do we have the same concern about our brethren in this country of ours? He may be our neighbor that we come in contact with in our everyday life. He may be our colleague in the office where we work, or our fellow human beings we come across in our day-to-day -day life. The percentage of loss was 1% for shepherd, 10 for the woman, and 50 for the father. But that is immaterial. What is important is the soul. That is important in this parable. We will accomplishing very little of our work for God until we understand the value of individuals. The news of one repented sinner makes heaven rejoice. Are we excited? We need to examine ourselves when we go to the when we go through the parable a large crowd followed jesus christ as he passed through jericho luke chapter 19 says but there was a seeker in the city he had all money but no peace and joy in his life Forgetting his position as chief collector, he climbs on to the tree to see Jesus. But before he could see Jesus, Jesus saw him, and not only that, he stayed with him. He asked him whether he could come to his house. At, uh, he, he was taken to his house. He stayed with him. What a surprise for the seeker. He was only seeking after Jesus Christ. But he had a surprise that Jesus could come to his house. In the midst of his crowded program, Jesus took time to stay with Zacchaeus. He, sh he has showed a love towards the seekers. That's what we see. In, if we come to our own country, we have seen that uh, even our father of the nation, Gandhiji, he was also a seeker, a noble soul, as we all know. But he was not saved. 
what he, we have seen in his life was he almost became a Christian when he came to seeking after Jesus Christ. In a South African church, he came to attend a church service. But what happened, we all know, he was shown a way outside the church to go to a black church. Here what we see is a great opportunity lost for us because of the racism shown towards Gandhiji. That is what is happening nowadays in our own churches, casteism in churches. So we are losing souls. So we have to go after people who come seeking after Jesus Christ. Whenever opportunity comes, we need to grab people. Many people come in search of peace. See, for example, take for example our own church. Many, if there's, our church is located in a very important place where many of the um, Hospitals are situated nearby. Patients come there. Their relatives come in search of peace. They come in search to peace, to pray for peace. And whenever we open our church for them, they come inside our church. They, they pray inside our church. So that is an opportunity given to us to speak to them to speak to them about our Lord Jesus Christ and pray with them and pray for their need. And it is a very great opportunity given to us to share our gospel with them. We know Mother Teresa did it in Calcutta among the poor. And we know how many people came to know about Jesus Christ's love because of our, our work among the people. So there will be joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. That's what we see in Luke chapter 15, verse 7. So what we have to know is every Christian should be a personal soul winner all his lifetime. Any time is soul winning time, and any one is a soul to be one. This is what Jesus Christ reiterated, even while dying on the cross, winning the soul of the thief. We need no mass crusades to speak to people. D.L. Moody, the famous crusade evangelist, says, there is nothing like hand-plucked hand fruit. See, nations can ban mass crusades, but who can prevent or stop personal evangelism or meeting people personally? Brother R. Stanley, a famous uh, evangelist, as we all know, says in his book, if only one person in the church reach out, one outside the church, the growth will defeat our imagination. For example, if there are 100 members in our church reaching out one in a month's time, and the same being adopted each month, we will increase in number our number will become 200 next month. Likewise, in the, at the end of the year, we will be 2,4800 in the year. So our growth will be like that when we reach out to people. Even if you allow 50% backsliding, you will be left, uh, still left with a clear membership of one lakh. But this arithmetic does not work out. According to 
a Christian mission statistics. Churches in Europe are losing 4,242 members in a day, including 1,727 Protestants. So it is time we awake to the fact that we have to reach out to people. See, unfortunately, for generations, we have been, or Christians, we Christians have been evangelizing the church, the classrooms of the schools, the pews, but not the world of unbelievers. People were invited to the church, the classroom, the club. It was hoped that they would receive Jesus Christ. This worked out for those who go to church. But 90% or more people do not go to church. So our greatest opportunity is outside the church, in our workplace, in parks, in streets, and in the homes, in railway stations, bus stand. Souls were one in homes in face-to-face -face ministry. So we have to, we have seen in our Lord's ministry a role model for all of us to follow. Whenever we talk of reaching out to people, we will have to think of our Lord as our role model. If you see in uh, scriptures, Acts chapter 8, verse 1 and 4, we see at the time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. The laymen were scattered and they were scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Verse 4 says, Therefore they were scattered abroad. They went everywhere preaching the word of God. Note here, only the layman went out, went out and preached the gospel to, to people. And the apostles stayed at Jerusalem. This is the way God intended it to be. Leaders were put inside the church to equip the members of the church to work for the ministry, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building the body of Christ. So, the Christian's life motto should be, or it should be very simple, one way, one job. The one job, the one way is Jesus Christ our Lord. The one job is soul winning. For the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And he that winneth soul is wise. That's what we read in Proverbs Chapter 11, verse 30. So, to become a partner with Jesus in his great work of saving lost souls, it is the greatest thing in the world. We need to just obey the greatest command that our Lord Jesus Christ gave before he left this world. A gifted gospel singer says, he was a great soul winner, he wrote this chorus, which expresses his soul winning passion so appropriately. He says, lead me to save a soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few are there 
or who seem to care, and few there are who pray. Melt my heart and fill my life. Give, give me one soul today. That's what he says. That should be our aim. So let us humbly submit ourselves in our Lord's hands so that each one of us will become a soul winner. God should lead us in that direction. Uh, before I close, I would like to say that this morning we had a very uh, beautiful morning worship service in which our, we have a, this is for the visitors, let me say, we have a school run for uh, the disabled children. We have a school called Parivalaya. They celebrated uh, their uh, annual day today and they performed to the congregation as to how they are progressing. They, you, we all know they are uh, disabled children. They cannot talk. They cannot perform well their daily routine. In spite of all this disability, this morning they came and worshipped with us. They showed all their talents. And in that service, our pastor preached a very beautiful uh, sermon in which he talked to the non-Christian parents who accompanied those uh, disability children who came to the morning worship service. It was a beautiful service. Non-Christian parents, they were assembled and they shared their testimonies with us. And pastor said, when Jesus Christ comes, we'll all be made well. Even the disabled children will all become all right. We'll all become one. And the non, it was a great message that, was, that has reached to the non-Christian friends. It was a great opportunity for us this morning to speak to the uh, non-Christian friends who assembled in our church, who worshipped with us this morning. And it, likewise, as Christians, we have opportunities. Whenever we come across such open opportunities with our neighbors, with our colleagues, with our travelers, when we, whenever we travel, we can share this gospel to our friends individually. We can be a soul winner. May God lead us in that direction in the, in the days to come. Amen.